Hello, happy Saturday, everyone. Let me know you can hear me okay. Yay, awesome. Let me know how you are, where you are, what city you're in. Hi, Liz. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Reiki, my day. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Lily. Jillian. Great to see you all. So I believe it's day 11 of our group devotion. I've um, spent the day cleaning my house. <laughs> what else are you going to do when you're inside? Um, yeah, I, um, we have done a full on spring clean today. So I've got my cleaning headband on. <laughs> oh. Hi, Alex. Hi, Jill. Hi, Joe. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Sandra. So today, what I would like to lead us in is we're going to do, we're going to receive a message for the day from the Oracle cards, but I just want to talk a little bit about Oracle cards just before I jump in. So the way I use Oracle cards is as an extension of our own intuition. So of course you can use them as, as a prediction tool totally. But we can also use them as a meditation tool. So the word oracle comes from the Latin word orari, which essentially means to pray or to communicate um, with the divine. And what I would like to add on to that is the divine is us, the soul within us, our heart, our intuition, our spirit that part of us is connected to what I would call God. You could call it the, the mysterious force of the universe. You could call it the goddess, whatever you call it. Um, and so when I work with Oracle cards, um, while I might do every six months, like a, my, one of my favorite tarot spreads is the Celtic cross. I might do that every six months. But I do use Oracle cards as part of my daily practice. Um, if I feel stuck on something or if I just want to shift my energy, I'll pull a card, might pull a couple of cards depending on what, what question I've got, what I want to, to meditate on. If I feel like I want to connect and receive inspiration and meditation isn't feeling completely right. So it's another version version of prayer. So what I thought that I'd do today is I'm going to, if you have an oracle deck um, or tarot deck at home that you like feel really called to use your own cards, I want you to get them now while, and I'll, I'll begin in just a moment. So if you go get your cards now, if you feel like drawing your own cards, you'll know, trust yourself whether or not you do. Um, and for those who don't feel like pulling your own cards, I'm going to pull cards for us as well. And if you've got Oracle cards, you can you can do both. So you can still receive the message that 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 I receive on behalf of the group, or or and you can also receive your own. So just grab your cards now, um, and I'm also going to be. Doing, um, my friend Kyle Gray calls this creating a mega deck. <laughs> I love that. What it essentially is, is bringing two decks together. Um, so I'm not sure if you, let me know if you've done this before. Pure Bella world. I see you've got, you've got your work, your light oracle cards. Awesome. Stephanie, you've got both of yours. So I'll be using the Starseed Oracle and the work your light oracle so the two of them together um and so this is the star seed 
I haven't actually combined these before. Um, and this is the work your light. So I'm going to be creating this mega deck and I don't know if it's just Kyle who does this or if it's a common thing that people do, but um, I've not done it before. So I thought that we would do it together. Um, standing on them says she grabbed her Kyle Gray deck, amazing. Um, so as you can see, it's mega. <laughs> it's really big. Um, so grab grab your deck, and if you want to do a mega deck with me, then grab more than one deck. Whoop! And um, we will begin in just a bit. It's harder to shuffle with a mega deck. <laughs> Okay, so, so Elements Dance Yoga says she can't hear me very well. Can let me know if you guys can hear me because I don't know what else I can do. I'm not really using an external microphone. I can, um, I can speak extra loud. Ryan Elizabeth Elder says, if one falls out when shuffling, do you ever take it as a sign? Absolutely. And again, trust yourself. Um, uh, I, I, the, they're called jumping cards, and most people um, who do readings really pay attention to the jumping cards. Um, so, yeah, but if you've got a mega deck, you're probably going to have more jumping cards because <laughs> it is so hard to handle. Amazing. Okay, so what we're going to do, thanks for letting me know the sound is okay. Um, right, so what we're going to do, just like we have in every day that we've shown up in um, as part of the group devotion gathering, is we're going to open individual soul space, then the joint soul space. Um, Elka says, are you drinking green tea? No, I'm drinking rose tea, little baby rose with um there's like a, a breathe tea so i kind of like put the two together that is what i'm drinking i've got it right here <laughs> um so yeah in a moment i'm gonna lead us through opening sacred soul space individually then as the group the reason we do the group open soul space is like the individual obviously is asking the soul, your connection with divine to step forward, um, particularly if we're running around in our lives, the process of inviting the soul to step forward, it, um, it just helps us like step into what the ancient Greeks called Kairos time. So into the space of devotion. And then the reason why we open the group soul space is because when we gather um, whether it's in a workshop space, in a circle, at an event, or virtually like this, there's a constellation of souls that are coming together. And particularly when we're doing something like I'll be doing pulling cards for the group, for the collective. So we are, are consciously stepping into that co-created space together. On top of that, the you would have heard many different traditions speak about the power of when two or more of us gather and what this means is our when we gather in in unified force when we gather um, coming from the space of the heart connecting to something greater and the thing that that connects us all our ability to heal receive guidance manifest let go is multiplied so that's part of what we're doing here today and over these 21 days during these days of group devotion is we're stepping into individual soul space as well as collective soul space. And when we step into collective soul space, we really do create shifts in the world. So that is what we're doing here today. So I want you to, if you've got your cards, just place them in front of you. And if not, I'll be pulling cards for you. I love you too. Um, so what we are going to do now is we're just going to rest in um, checking where your energy is at. Are you leaning forward? Are you back? And just bringing yourself to center. Deep breath in. 
Deep breath out. Really noticing what's holding you right now. So notice the chair that's holding you, the ground that's holding you. Gravity. During times of change in particular, it can feel like we're losing our ground. So it does feel like that in your life right now with a lot of change. Make sure that you notice that the ground is holding you and what is holding you. This group is holding you. I am holding you. Your devotional practice is holding you. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Okay, bringing your hands to prayer and the center of your heart, imagine a beautiful flower. And with your next breath, invite that flower to open petal by petal, revealing a light in the middle, an inner light, which represents your soul, the ancient part of you, the all-knowing part of you. And now raising your hands to just above your crown. And as you do, inviting that part of you to step forward now, opening your hands up, down and around, back to prayer. Sharing a breath here. Breathe out. Okay, so now we are going to open the joint soul's way. So connecting with all of those incredible people from all corners of the planet who are gathered, either live or in replay. And now activating that group energy, bringing your hands up to just above your crown, open and around, down and then back to heart, deep breath in, deep breath out, okay, and then opening your eyes. And if you have your cards or if you have a, even a mega deck like me, <laughs> you, what I normally do is I hold my cards to my heart. And I say one of two prayers and I'm going to say both of them now so you can do them with me if you have your cards. And if not, just place your hands on your heart and say this, these prayers with me. First is from A Course in Miracles, it's a, a version of something from A Course in Miracles called the Miracle Worker's Prayer, which says, I'm here to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent that which is me. I do not have to think about what to say or do because that which sent me will direct me. I'm happy just to be here and knowing that all grace is within me. I will be healed as I let the healing happen through me. Taking a deep breath in. And breathe out. And then the second prayer is a prayer which I wrote. is very basic, very simple, but very on point and powerful in repetition. And that is... Connecting to whatever part, whatever thing that you believe in, whether it's God, a particular God or Goddess, a force, the world, whatever it is. And saying to whatever it is you believe in and you get your faith from, please lead me, please guide me, please show me the way. Please lead me, please guide me, please show me the way. Please lead me, please guide me, please show me the way. Deep breath in, deep breath out. So the spread that we're going to do today is a soul whispers spread. It's a really simple one, a great one if you want to do as part of like a daily practice. Um, the first card in position one is the soul whisper what your soul is calling you to do and then the or wants you to know so it's the message and then in position two it is the physical action so the baby step okay 
So often when you are, Stephanie says, do you ask the person you're pulling a card for this to, you, do you do it on their behalf? Um, are you talking about the press, Steffi? Or the, um, if it's the prayer, it's up to you. <laughs> um, I tend to not, I tend to do the prayers myself prior to me even meeting with the person and at some stage sometimes I will open sacred soul space even before they arrive and then I'll lead them through a, um, a visualization um, but I always before I teach or before I do a reading or um, anything like that I tend to open sacred soul space and sometimes I'll then do it with when I do a workshop for example I'll open sacred soul space with the whole group um so you can just judge whether you think that your your people will be open to it or you can come up with your own um ritual these are all rituals um there's power in repetition repetition is something to hold on to a tradition so the 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 more you can continue to do the same things um, as rituals through different practices the more grounded you're likely to feel okay so what i'd invite us all to do now is to just think of something an area of your life or a question that you've got that you would like to receive guidance about um, and if you can't think of anything then then you could just stay open to receiving but I do find that the more focused you can be the easier it is to receive guidance around that thing it's kind of like when you come up with creative ideas so for example um, in my book writing process if I sit down and I don't know what I'm writing about and I'm just saying give me inspiration what to write about um it's harder to come up with something than if i am like okay there is a chapter that i want to write or there's something i'm struggling with myself and i'm going to connect in with the wise part of me um, to receive writing or guidance on that focused point so that's that's why we want to focus on a particular area um and then also as we're doing it um you may receive um, guidance about something else. So staying open to that. And a reminder of what I said at the beginning, that within the tradition that I, I practice in, um, it's remembering the, the, the fact that the, the, the word oracle, um, as in oracle cards, comes from the Latin word orari, which means to pray or communicate with the divine. So... Um, that's what we're doing and and of course the divine is you so it's communicating with the the divine part of you which is who you are um, so you may call it your soul um, or it could be like it's up to you what you believe in but you you get what I'm saying now I'm sure so as you're shuffling your cards if you do have cards I want you to just consider and feel into the the area of your life you'd like guidance on. If you don't have cards, then I'm going to be pulling, doing a collective pull for us. So thinking about the area of your life you would like guidance on. And then if you like, you can blow three times into the cards. Okay. And then I like to split the cards three times, but you don't have to do this. And then I fan them out in front of me. And then I'm going to select two cards and keep them in that position. 
or that order, I should say. Okay. So I have um, two cards here. So this is whoop, position one and position two. And I'm going to actually put the mega deck <laughs> aside and I'm going to use the Starseed Oracle box. Um, for those of you who, who have the Oracle, you'll know that it's like quite interactive. Um, Rodette says, can you save this live? Yes, so um, it will be, on, if you're on Instagram, it'll be up for 24 hours, but I'm also recording onto Facebook, so you can come to my Facebook page to get it, um, but we've done a redirect because um, we're doing 21 days of devotion, so um, you'll find all of the videos if you go to rebeccacampbell.me forward slash devotion. Um, or just go to my website and there's like a, a, a banner that will redirect you. So it's all free. It's like you don't have to sign up or anything. Okay, so with the, the Starseed Oracle, um, this is the top of the box. Um, and so we put the cards like this in the Soul Whispers um, spread so you can see that. So in position number one, I've got a card from the Work Your Light Oracle. And so remembering that this is a soul whisper. So card one is what your soul wants you to know, the soul whisper. So the soul whisper here, I love this card. It says, just say yes. And I know what the copy says in the guidebook. It literally is about 200. Yes, 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 yes. So it's a real direct card. <laughs> If, if, to say the least and you know this makes me think of how the universe is self-organizing and what we are going so face said you had the same card wow yeah if you're doing your own reading let me know what cards you got in position one and two so the universe is self-organizing which means when we surrender to what, what the universe is calling us to do, when we surrender to that yearning within us, when we surrender to what life is asking of us, everything organizes and falls into place. Now, there is no question about the fact that we are all being called to halt to a stop right now to to go in and most of us self-isolate be in our home and and the one thing that we know is certain is that change is the certainty now this has always been the way and the truth because this is the truth of nature change is the only one certain thing um but as we go through our busy lives, we tend to try and overwork and grow, grow, grow and move from one thing to the other really quickly. Now, what most of us are being called to do around the world right now is stop and adapt and shift. So that's what this card really represents, in my opinion. It's what I'm receiving with the meaning of the card here. Um, the soul whisper is to just say yes. So, so let go of the part of you that is like trying to keep things the way things were. And instead surrender and say yes to what life is asking of you right now. So that's the soul whisper and the the baby step which is the the, the pla practical thing to do now this card i i love this card the message of this card this is from the star suit oracle and this card is the void so it says here stop embrace winter great cosmic womb so i'm going to read what this card means um because there is a lot of information in this one, but it is, 
I mean, particularly if you've got the yes as in like, do what life is asking of you and stop, really. And to really remember that when you stop, when you surrender, what happens is that things happen on your behalf. You don't have to be busy for things to be done. So I'm going to read the, the meaning of this one because it is jam-packed. One moment. So here we go. Everything and nothing exists in the void. It's where all life begins and ends. It's the winter and the womb. The fertile darkness where all things originate, originate and all seeds grow. Comforting and intimidating, freeing and daunting. It can feel both overwhelmingly small and huge. The void is where faith lives. The message of the void is to surrender to the unknown. Isn't that so apt with where we are right now? To allow the fertile darkness, nothingness, to nourish the new seeds growing within you. Regardless of whether you know what they'll one day become. You're being called to surrender to the mystery of what's next. To rest and to allow the winter of your life to do the work for you. you know, I've been talking a lot in these daily devotion sessions about how we are all being called now to surrender to our own inner winter, right? To hand over your control and trust that just because you can't see what's happening beneath the surface, it doesn't mean things aren't at work. The greatest weavings happen when we find a way to surrender and trust that our life is being knitted for us. Right beneath, right beneath the surface, in ways known and unknowable, now is the time to cultivate faith and allow deep, deep rest. The void often surfaces at the end of a chapter or a life phase, when we're called to let go of all that we know and identify with. When you're in the void, it can feel scary and as if you should be doing something. However, when this card appears, it's a sure sign that the most productive thing to do is relinquish control and surrender to the changing mystery of your life. So the soul inquiry for this card, which is for this reading, which is from the Starseed Oracle deck, is how are you being called to surrender to the unknown mystery of your life? So the question here is, how are you being called to surrender? I want you to answer that in the comments below. How are you being called to surrender? Which is what life is, one big mystery. <laughs> Donna says you can't make this up. I know it's a lovely. Hmm. Robbie says rest, reset, let it all be. <laughs> Quarantine, yes. How are you being called to surrender? I agree, Virgie. It is very incredible we're going through this all together. To be present in the moment, letting go of expectation, let go of money anxiety, knowing it's going to be okay. By taking one day at a time, having patience. Hmm. Place my family members in goddesses to embrace beautiful. Letting go of I need to know what's going on and just trust. Yes, what a what a practice. Don't jump into fretful conclu conclusions. Yes, stop rushing. To 
say on my morning walk this came to me you don't know what cooking so keep the fire warm oh that's beautiful trust my gut with what my career should be now amen Mm. Mm. trust in thee yes practice kindness sir the shield to open heart heartedness that's beautiful breathe lean on my devotion yeah these really are times to lean into our devotion to hold on to our devotion Generally speaking, people don't find spiritual practice or devotional practice through things going really well. Um, often we reach for it. We need something to hold on to when what was the steady ground crumbles around us. And that's why you know, in my first book, Light is New Black, I wrote this poem called I Pray That You Hit Rock Bottom. And... The reason for that is that there is always, always, always blessings in the crumble. But it takes a lot for us to surrender and allow the full cracking open to happen. And the only difference about today compared to a month ago is that we're going through this thing together. And there is something heartening about that. Oh, so I hope that those cards were helpful. Um, I hope that you experienced a feeling of, of, of praying and connecting with the God, with the divine through using the cards. Again, that is what my card practice is all about. Connecting in with your own soul, your heart. Okay, so um, we're gonna close the joint and individual soul space now. So hands at prayer, feeling the connection of those who've gathered. Bringing our hands down, around, up to our crown, back to heart. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then individual soul space, bringing your hands down, around, up, and to heart. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Feeling the connection of all of us who've gathered in real time and in our own time. Open your eyes. And I wish you just a wonderful day.